Lord shall bring thee, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Israelites have a history of appointing wicked leaders over them. Our bloodline history have displayed that we do not know what a healthy leadership is. Israelites will serve everyone except the Most High. In addition, Israelites will submit to wicked leaders and disgrace the ordained leaders appointed by the Most High. We learn in the scriptures how our ancestors reject the Most High on several occasions. It was due to our ancestors' disobedience and serving the idols of the heathens that caused the Most High to split our nation into two kingdoms. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. The Most High exiled his people out of the Promised Land and scattered them all over the world. Due to their continuous rebellion against his laws, statutes, and commandments, the Most High said to the Israelites the reason he chose them was because they were few in numbers. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. The Most High did not choose the Israelites because of their righteousness. The Israelites have demonstrated throughout their generations that they are more wicked than righteous. Because the Israelites were a few in numbers, the Most High could show himself strong through them. In addition, the other nations would see the power the Elohim of Israel had. Through his undisputed power, the heathens would forsake their idols to serve the Most High. If the Israelites were the largest nation with a superpower army backing them up, the other nations would credit their success to their government and army. Because the Most High wants to reconcile his creation back to himself, he chose a nation with a small population to display his glory. When you are the underdog and you still manage to defeat your enemies, everyone will know you had a greater power assisting you. A great example to help you understand is Haiti. Haiti was the underdog when the heathen hybrids took advantage of the Israelites and the indigenous population. When Haiti defeated their enemies round about, those with spiritual eyes knew without a doubt the Most High defeated their enemies. There is no way a tiny nation with a small population could beat their enemies who had an advantage and resources. In situations like Haiti, you have to give the Most High credit for their victory. What most people fail to realize, an army of flesh cannot stand against a spiritual army. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. You would have to open your eyes, Israelites, for you to see the incredible help we have in the Most High. Unfortunately, many of us turn down the spiritual help given to us by the Most High for the assistance of what we can see in the flesh. Because most Israelites wants to be like the heathen nations, they believe if they have an army of flesh, they can compete with the heathens. If only the Most High would open your eyes to see the spiritual army encamp around you. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The scriptures reveal to us that the angels of the Most High is in camp around us to deliver and protect us. If Israelites could comprehend the amount of angels ready to battle for them, Israelites would be on their knees praying to the Most High for their spiritual army to help them. Yahshua said to the disciples with him at the time Judas Iscariot betrayed him, if he wanted, he could pray and ask the Most High to send 12 legions of angels to help him. Thinkst thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? 
We should be following Yahshua's example and knowing we have angelic help and requesting the Most High to dispatch his army to fight for us in the times we live in. We are invested in humans to save us. Israelites will appoint a man over them and dismiss the Most High in a heartbeat. Israelites wants to build an army like the heathen nations. The Most High is our president, government, and army. You do not need an army of flesh to compete with the nations today. The Most High warned us long ago that no leader or man you set over you would save you. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore and no man shall save thee. This is why every leader that stood up for the black community were assassinated. The Most High was not backing them up. Those leaders wanted to be your savior. This is why they allowed the people to idolize them. Most of the so-called leaders who tried to help the black community loved the worship they received from the sheep. Israelites will make an idol out of a person if they show a little kindness to them. The Most High did not reveal where he buried Moses because he knew his people would idolize him. So Moses, a servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. Every black leader that so-called stood up for the black community, where are they now? Was their cause successful? Because their agenda did not match with the Most High, the black community continued to be oppressed by the heathen. It is about time we stop replacing our king, the Most High, with flesh. During the times of our forefathers, the heathens knew the Elohim of Israel and they feared him. Israelites have demonstrated throughout their generations how they will place men and idols above their Elohim. The Israelites definitely know how to choose the wrong leaders to lead them. During the generations of our forefathers, the Israelites reject the Most High as their king and request that the Most High gave them a king in the form of a man. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Our ancestors wanted a king that would fight for them. The most important reason the Israelites wanted a man for a king, they wanted to be like the heathen nations. Every attribute the Israelites asked Samuel for in a king, the Most High has displayed as their king. The Most High fought for his people when they served him. Throughout their generations, the Most High would protect and provide for his people. Even when the Israelites are in sin, the Most High would provide. When the Israelites were leaving Egypt and going into the wilderness, the Israelites remembered the good food they used to eat in Egypt. The Most High gave them manna to eat and met their every need during the Exodus. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning... Ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. The Most High overthrow kingdoms and fight armies that outnumbered his people. The Most High parted the sea before the eyes of our ancestors. Our forefathers still managed to reject the Most High and wanted to appoint a man over them. They wanted a man to represent them. In this present generation, Israelites are continuing the rebellion that our ancestors committed from the beginning. Slavery and brainwashing are the excuses our people use to blame their inability to choose good leadership. Our ancestors have been forsaking the Most High from the beginning. In addition, our ancestors were placed in multiple captivities. Slavery and brainwashing is not the cause to our people's failure in forsaking our true leader, the Most High. It is not that we don't know how to choose good leadership. It is our refusal to do so. We all know right from wrong. We allow the kingdom of darkness to entice us into making decisions that is detrimental to us. Our ancestors have displayed the rebellious trait from the beginning, and the rebellious trait continue from generations to generations. This is why the Most High command this generation to turn from their wicked ways. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from
from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Instead of repenting and turning from our wicked ways, we bend the rules to cater to us to make it appear as if we're righteous. Today, Israelites would choose a leader based on their looks, money, and popularity. Most Israelites will dismiss that leader's shady past until that leader disappoints them. When the time comes, and it will, for the Most High to reveal the king you set over yourselves true intentions, Israelites will use the shady past as leverage to tear down the leader they set over themselves. Our ancestors were aware of the consequences of making a man their leader. The Most High would warn his people ahead of time. The Most High warned the Israelites about King Saul. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, albeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. The Most High warned his people in the book of Deuteronomy of what would befall them if they disobeyed him. Our ancestors were fully aware of the consequences, but they chose to go against the Most High. As their descendants, we continue to choose the wrong leaders. We have the testimony of our fathers in our family history book, the Bible. In addition, the mistakes they made, but most of us refuse to learn from their mistakes. Our only leader should always be the Most High. When we humble ourselves and serve the Most High in the spirit and in the truth, then the Most High will appoint a leader that match his character to lead his people. Yah chose David and appointed David as king over his people. King David led the Israelites and served the Most High in his generation. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that leddest out, and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron. And David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Out of David's lineage came the Messiah. When the Most High chose the leader he wants to show himself strong through, the Israelites would obey and follow his instructions. Under an ordained leader of the Most High, our lives is not oppressed because the Most High is fighting for his people and pleading their case. The Most High chose Yahshua to teach his people his ways. Until this day, some Israelites are rejecting the Messiah due to their unbelief and lack of knowledge. They are continuing the rejection our forefathers have started. Our ancestors said, let Yahshua's blood be on them and their children. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Now do you see why you are in the conditions you are in? Israelites, you do not want another person's blood on your hands. Our ancestors made a decision and dragged every generation after them into their curse. Covenants are passed down from generations to generations, regardless if the covenant is good or bad. When the Israelites said, let his blood be on us and their children, that was a generational curse placed in our bloodline by our ancestors. Poor leadership bring curses and oppression. Israelites, our communities is lacking good leadership. Most Israelites have placed idols over themselves to lead them. Remember, an idol can be a person, place, or a thing. Most Israelites have rejected the Most High as their king and transferred the kingship to the heathens, celebrities, politicians, influencers, spiritual leaders, and family. Israelites allow the enemy that has enslaved them to dictate what takes place in their lives and their households. 
If the heathen's present leadership is running your household, then Satan is the head of your household. Because most Israelites have rejected the Most High as their king, they are being defeated in every area of their lives. Instead of our enemies fleeing from us seven ways, we are fleeing from them because we have no power, no might in us without our true leader, the Most High. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Our failures collectively is evidence of our inability to choose good leadership. If the idols we set over us were powerful and able to deliver us, we would triumphant over our enemies. I will remind you again, the Most High is our only king and leader. We should not idolize celebrities, politicians, governments, influencers, pastors, or any spiritual leaders. We should not replace the Most High with idols that cannot save us. Obama certainly disappointed plenty of people and many Israelites made him their king. We have to ask the Most High to give us a double portion of the spirit of discernment. We have to look past the flesh to recognize healthy leadership that stems from the Most High. When we choose independently of the Most High, we choose leaders that will abuse us and take advantage of us. In addition, the leaders we choose has the tendency to lead us astray from the Most High. Beware of these wolves in sheep clothing. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Israelites, healthy leadership consists of meekness. Moses was the meekest man alive. This is a character trait every leader must possess. Just because an individual use eloquent speech and have good stage presence, it doesn't mean this person is a leader. In addition, ordained by the Most High. A leader ordained by the Most High has the ability to listen and control his or her environment without violence. Bad leaders will use intimidation, manipulation, and fear to control those beneath him or her. You can use your authority without violence. When the Most High rejects Saul as king and made David king over the Israelites, Saul tried to kill David on multiple occasions. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. Despite his father-in-law trying to kill him, David respects Saul even in his death. David did not go around saying, I'm the leader, I'm the king, you must bow down to me and worship me. David knew he was the king, however, he was humbled. He knew he had an enormous responsibility to lead the Most High's people. He relied on the Most High to show him how to succeed in his role as king. That is why he was successful. He allowed the Most High to show himself strong through him. Until this day, we are talking about how great of a king David was. The Israelites knew David was anointed and chosen by the Most High because of his character and his love for the Most High. His spirit exuded a certain energy that allowed the people around him to respect him and listen to him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. If you want to succeed in leading your house, men of Israel and daughters of Jerusalem, rely on the Most High to teach you how to lead your family and you will succeed. In order for you to lead a kingdom, you first must know how to lead your household. Throughout our generations, we have been slaves and exiles. This is why Jeremiah asks, is Israel a natural born slave? Is Israel a servant? Is he a home born slave? Why is he spoiled? We have been desensitized to poor leadership. If anyone mistreat us, we believe that is good leadership. When the heathens pretend to be for us when they are truly against us, we welcome them with open arms. We refuse to analyze those we place over us with the most high standards. Israelites, we must have high standards. You don't want to appoint an unqualified person over you just because he or she is popular, have money, and beautiful. The scripture says Satan is beautiful. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. The scriptures describe King Saul as a good-looking man, yet he turned out to be a terrible leader. Satan is beautiful and he's an adversary to you and me. Do not let appearance have the final say. 
But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Israelites, you don't have to accept poor leadership. In addition, when the Most High send you good leaders, do not mistreat them. Some Israelites have the tendency to crucify the anointed among us and praise and accept the wicked leaders sent by the kingdom of darkness. Recognize those who are of the Most High and those who are not. Our leader as Israelites should always be the Most High. Yah will appoint a person he could show himself strong through to lead his people. We have a king and a nation of our own. At the appointed time, the Most High will restore his people and set them on their own land. While we wait on our leader, the Most High, to restore his people, we are to humble ourselves, pray, seek, and repent. We are not in the land of our captivity due to our righteousness. We are captives due to iniquity. We do not need what the heathens have. What the Most High has prepared for his people is greater and better than any present heathen kingdom. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him.